Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look at installing the Demco diode wiring kit on a 2020 Chevy Silverado 1500. There's five required components when flat towing any vehicle and on our Chevy 1500 today, we'll start by taking a look at the base plate. And the base plate is gonna mount to where the factory tow hooks were or structurally to the frame of the vehicle, creating a mounting point for the rest of your components and also your tow bar. Tow bar is your second component and that is connecting point between the base plate and the hitch on the RV. Now, just like a trailer, we have our safety cables here that'll attach to the tabs on the base plate that are gonna be your safety chain loops, and then you'll just attach those to the safety chain loops on your RV. We also have our diode wiring, which is gonna transmit the light signals from the RV to the taillights on the towed vehicle, keeping you safe and legal. You'll get your running lights, your turn signals, as well as your brake lights on the taillights of your towed truck. Now also we have a braking system which is going to slow and stop the vehicle as you apply the brakes. Today we have an Air Force One so that's what this cable is because we have air brakes on our coach. But this is our breakaway switch which is part of a braking system, any of them. And that way in case of a catastrophic disconnect where everything was to fail, it'll pull this cable bringing the vehicle to a slow or stop. Now something that's specific to the 1500 and a few other newer vehicles is the fact that it has electric assist brakes. And what you're gonna wanna do with that is add a battery disconnect. That way you can disconnect the battery and it's gonna keep the braking system working fine as you're flat towing the vehicle. Now you can unhook the battery from the positive terminal, but it's kind of a little bit cumbersome to do each time. So adding a breakaway switch is gonna be ideal. And keep in mind, this is a Duramax. There is a diesel specific battery disconnect as well as a gas one. So make sure you're picking up the proper battery disconnect. When it comes to flat towing a vehicle, it's much like a trailer and a trailer has lights to let people know what you're doing because this is gonna be behind your RV. And a lot of times you've seen those magnetic lights on towed vehicles, but that means that you're gonna to have to store those. You're gonna to have to run your cable all the way up to the RV. And the new way to do that is diodes. And diodes is simply just attach into the factory taillight signals. And you run diode wiring up to the front to a six pole, which is gonna transmit the light signals via the umbilical from the RV. So when you have your running lights, your turn signals or brake lights, it's going to transmit it to your tail lights. Now, as far as the installation goes, you are going to be uh, having to run wire from the front of the vehicle on that six pole to the tail lights where you are going to be splicing into your factory tail light wiring, but the diode wiring is safe. It's not going to cause any damage to your factory vehicle wiring uh, long term. And the great part is, is once it's installed, all you have to do is hook up your umbilical and it's ready to go. Now this kit can definitely piece together some of your required flat tow components because it comes with an umbilical as well as a six pole, which is two components that you are gonna need for your flat tow. Um, so the fact that that comes with it is really nice. As far as the installation goes, you don't need to be a wiring expert to do this. I'm gonna walk you through all the steps. So follow along, we'll get your diode wiring installed. Now to get diode wiring installed is actually pretty easy. The hardest part is really just routing it from the front of the vehicle to the back of the vehicle. So at the front, we're gonna be mounting up our six pole and I found a spot here on the bumper that I was able to uh, take a step bit and kind of drill this out and we'll be able to mount our plug here. Now this is a good time if you do have a charge line that you're gonna be putting in, that's also gonna tie in with the six pole up front. So you might wanna grab that red wire and run that up towards the battery. That way when we make our connection, we'll have that all set. So since we are gonna be mounting it here, what I always do is just kind of uh, give myself a little bit of extra wire and I just looped it around here and taped it. That way it's not gonna pull as I go. Um, and from here, this just kind of routes over. Uh, there's a pocket here, and that way we can start making our route back. And I've left the zip ties on where I've zip tied it up so you can kind of see exactly where we go. I use some wire loom along here um, just to kind of give it a cleaner look from the exterior. You won't be able to see the diode colored wires, um, but I just kind of went over the steering there's some holes in the frame that I zip tied up to. That way it's gonna avoid steering the axle um, and just kind of keep it tidy. From here, I routed this up and over the frame rail to bring this into here. Now at this point, I peeled back the white wire and cut it uh, to where we can put our self-tapping screw. This is gonna become a chassis ground and it's twofold to be able to do this in this location or somewhere up in the front because all that excess white wire that I was able to salvage, I can use as a jumper wire further downstream. So once I peel that back, I just put my ring terminal, crimp that down, self-tapped it into the frame, and then we continued with the remaining wires. 
From here, just use some of the gusseting here on the frame to zip tie this up to get a nice clean run. Um, over the gas tank, I made my way to this bracket, kind of routed this. Now the exhaust kind of gets a little uh, all over the place here, and we obviously want to make sure that we don't uh, have that wire resting on the exhaust to where it can become damaged. So um, I kind of kept this up tight and decided to split it at this plate and the rear cross member. So our green wire eventually is going to go to our right turn signal. Our yellow and brown are going to go to our left turn. So this is where I split it up. So we can follow the yellow and brown first. Just kind of went over, zip tying it up to some of the factory wire loom. Um, I then used the bed corrugation to zip tie that up. And then just kind of make sure on the shock mount, you know, it's not going to make contact with the shock long term. And then just kind of made my way over to this pocket. I zip tied it up to this bracing here. And uh, that's going to make it to where we can pull this wire up. Now, this white wire is the excess that I cut from that ground wire. I just routed this up uh, pretty much where you have uh, this corrugation in the bed. There's some factory wire loom. I just routed this across. You can use your hitch really any way that you need to pass that wire. Uh, I made my way over and that's where we have our excess. Now the green's pretty similar. Um, I just kind of routed this one over, very similar to the brown and yellow, uh, just up over the shock mount, making sure it's not gonna make contact with a shock. Use the factory wire loom to zip tie this up and then eventually make my way over to this pocket. Now we're gonna to need to splice into obviously our taillight wiring, so the taillights need to come out. And with the Chevy trucks, it's gonna be a T15 Torx bit. There's just two of them. So go ahead, get these removed. And your taillights generally have alignment tabs that they kind of push into. So we kind of have to knock this loose a little bit. So I just kind of shake the taillight a little bit. That should loosen it up. Shouldn't have to pry on it too much, but uh, sometimes if you get dust and dirt kind of just built up in here, uh, they may need a little bit more persuasion. So our alignment tabs, we have these studs here that go into the rubber. So pulling straight out is gonna be key. So if you need to, you can bump this along. You can even use a plastic trim tool to kind of wedge it. Just be careful. You obviously don't wanna chip your taillight in the process. Now to give us a little bit more room to work and be able to tie into our wiring, we're gonna separate our wires that we have here. Um, looks like this is, it's got, it's kind of clipped in here. So if you kind of loosen it up from that clip, that's gonna give you more room to work. And we just have this red tab. Pry this back. Push on the center. Get that unplugged. And then this one's going to be just a quarter turn. So with that separated, we'll go ahead. We'll get our other tail light taken out as well. And we're going to start on the driver's side here. Uh, we're going to have insulation that's kind of wrapped around this wire loom. So where our plug is, this is where we're going to be tying in. And we want to give ourselves as much room as possible. So peel back the tape and then you can peel back the wire loom. I'm going to cut ours just to kind of get this out of the way. Now, normally you would test the wires to get your stop and turn, which are going to be combined. So your turn signal and stop light use the same bulb. And then you're also going to test for your running lights. Um, I've gone ahead and done that already. So I've determined the wires that we're going to be using are going to be the green wire is going to be our stop and turn. And then there's a brown wire. Uh, it's kind of a dark brown. Just make sure it's not black. It looks fairly similar here. But uh, what we'll do is we'll take these two wires, kind of just give ourselves a little room here, and we're going to make our first cuts. So I'm going to cut a little bit further back from our plug. And then what we'll do is we're going to peel back just a little bit here with our strippers. And we're going to take our spade connectors that are included in the kit and we're going to crimp down these first wires. Now, anytime you're making a, a crimp connection, I highly recommend making sure that once you crimp it down, you give it a quick tug to make sure that it's on there properly. That way you're not having to ch chase down loose wires. Now with those two made, we'll just take our diodes and the 
out portion, you can see that molded in, just has the one connector. That's gonna go towards our plug. So you can take your diode and get this plugged in on both sides. And then we're gonna strip back the other ends of the wire and get spade connectors put on there as well. Now with those connections made, we can just uh, plug these in with the corresponding wire. So we have our brown wire here. We'll just plug this into either of these in uh, male tabs. So it doesn't matter which one. And this is just gonna complete that circuit for our factory lights. So let's get this one plugged in as well. Now the wires that we ran back, we're gonna need to pull those up through this pocket. Uh, the way we do this is a uh, fish wire technique using an airline tube. Just pass that down. We'll tape up our wires and pull it up. Uh, you might be able to pass this through. It's fairly open. Um, so if you can get those wires pulled up here, that's what we're looking to do. I'm gonna pull up all the ex excess slack that we have. Make sure we're not wrapped around anything. And we obviously have quite a bit of extra wire here. So I'm just gonna cut back some of the excess. And this is where it gets a little bit different. Um, it's pretty easy to do the turn signal first. So let's go ahead, we'll get our yellow one separated. And we're gonna strip this one back. And we'll get our spade connector on there. And this is going to be for our left turn signal as well as our brake, which on our wiring here is going to be our green. So take the yellow and put this one to the diodes with the green wires. Now our others are going to be our, for our running light. And this jumper's between the two, as I mentioned earlier. So we're gonna need to make this a one wire because the spade connector is really not a large gauge uh, to be able to make the, both those wires go in there. So what we're gonna do is cut back a little of our white. And then we're gonna be using a quick connect to kind of make a connection between uh, our two wires here. So to make these one wire to go into our spade connector, it comes with the quick connect uh, fitting here. So we'll just slide these over you can run your brown wire through and you may need to pry this open a little bit to get your white wire in here. But we should have them sitting uh, parallel in the channels that they have there. So what we'll do is grab a set of pliers and when we press this down, it'll bite into those getting electrical connections from both, tying them together, to crimp these down. A pair of channel locks works a little bit better here. But make sure that metal is nice and flush. So that way it has a nice connection between the two wires. And then from here, once you have that crimped down, you'll just cap this up. And I recommend putting a little bit of electrical tape around all of this. That way, long term, it's not gonna degrade it if the, any water or moisture gets built up in here. And then with the leftover of our white, we'll just strip back a portion We'll get our spade connector on here. Crimp this down. And then we'll make our final connection on our brown wire. And at this point, the driver's side, we have all of our connections made. So what I normally do, just to make sure that these don't pull out anytime soon, uh, it's gonna be a little bit more structurally sound. I take electrical tape and just kind of wrap it around. That way there's no tension being put directly on the spade connector or the wire. With that taped up, we'll just go ahead and reconnect our tail light. Make sure you lock that back in. Put the bulb back in. 
And then we'll just feed this in, get our tail light mounted back up, and head over to the other side. Now on our passenger side, it's gonna be very similar. In fact, the colors are the same. Uh, we have that green and the brown wires. Uh, we don't have to do any extra splicing here since we made that connection on the other side. So our white is gonna go with the brown. Our green wire is gonna to attach to the green. So I'll go ahead, we'll get this all taped up and then we can make our connection on the six pole up front. Now we're at a point where we can get our six pole mounted up. And again, I'll mention if you do have that charge line, I would highly recommend having that here because it's gonna go directly into our six pole. It's really hard to go back and do that. Uh, so I obviously have quite a bit of ex excess wire here and I did that on purpose, but I'm gonna trim a little bit uh, just because we do have quite a bit. And from here, we're just gonna separate the wires and strip them back a little bit. And before stripping them, you might take your boot and slide it over just to make it a little bit easier here. Now on the back of the plug, we see all the terminals that the wires will go into and the arrows are denoting where they need to go. And to get the wires in place, you're gonna be loosening up that spot with a small flathead screwdriver. Don't back it out completely, just enough to kind of get your wires in place. Um, so the GD that's pointing here, that's going to be our ground. So when we put our wires in, you also want to make sure you don't over tighten it, causing damage to the wires. So just kind of make it snug enough to where it's going to hold in place. Next one I'll do is TM and that's going to be tail marker. So that's our running lights, which is going to be our brown. Now I found that, uh, even tightening this down, it really wasn't getting a great bite. So if you need to, what you can do is strip this back a little bit more and then just bend the ends. And this will give it just a little bit more to bite onto. Um, might be a little bit tighter fit while sliding it in, but long term, it's going to hold that in a little better. Now our LT is going to be left turn signal. So that's going to be yellow. And then RT is right turn signal which is gonna be our green wire. Now, if you do have that charge line, it's gonna go into that center tall post so you can get that attached if you have one. Now, with all of those attached, something that we do, it's not completely necessary, but it does help prolong the lifespan of the six pole that sits on the front of the vehicle. It gets exposed to a lot of weather. So a little bit of RTV silicone, to just kind of fill up those gaps. That's gonna make sure that moisture doesn't get in there and break this down prematurely. Um, so once that's kind of gooped up, we'll go ahead, we'll take our boot, slide this over, and kind of going along with, uh, you know, making sure this lasts a long time. I'm gonna take some electrical tape, wrap it around where the boot is, that way it doesn't slide off. And you can choose to backfill this if you'd like as well. I'll do that here. Now we need to mount up our six pole. Um, now I chose to use, again, a step bit to run it through here. It makes for a nice mounting point. I think it looks really good. So uh, I'm just gonna be self tapping this in. Now our final step before using our diodes is testing to make sure that they work before hitting the road. So we'll grab our six pole and I'm gonna be using a test box that simulates being hooked up to the seven pole on our RV. You can hook it up to your RV and we'll just run through the light sequence. We wanna make sure that it's transmitting to the taillights on the vehicle. So we'll start with our running lights. We'll then check our left turn signal. We'll then do our right turn signal and then finally our brake lights. So once you've tested your lights, you know that they're working, you've officially installed your diodes. And that was a look at installation of the Demco Diode Wiring Kit on a 2020 Chevy Silverado 1500.